down, down the road, down the witch's road. SHUT THE FUCK UP! Yo, how's it going? Hopefully you're having a good day. So I decided to bite the bullet and watch Agatha all along. And I guess it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Just, I don't know, boring and not funny when it wants to be funny. And what is it with Disney and witches? We had a Star Wars show about Coven of Witches. The power of one. The power of two. The power of many. Shut the fuck up! Know your fucking place, trash! And now in Agatha all along, Agatha's gathering a coven of witches to go to the witch's road to get her powers back. <laughs> what the- what the blooming hell? Are we seriously that creatively bankrupt? Or is it because you're hiring the wrong people for this kind of work? I feel like after this, I don't want to see another story about witches in the next five years because I am sick of it. The only kind of witches I'd rather watch is Charmed because it's a fun show and obviously the three main girls are really pretty, you know? What, can you blame me? Now now, dear viewer, there are a couple of things I kind of enjoyed with these first two episodes, but we'll sort of get to it, which I feel like will be in no time because there really is nothing to talk about with these first two episodes. These episodes could have been combined into one. <laughs> Similar problem with Andor's first three episodes definitely applies with this show, because majority of the first episode is Agatha playing along with this dream world because of Scarlet Witch putting her under that spell where she's a detective and she finds this Jane Doe, this dead body. There was no name until later on it's revealed to be Wanda. I kind of guessed it already when you see her hands, but the show thinks it's so clever that it took us, well, over half an hour to get the review, to get the reveal. That weird stuff is happening around Agatha. It's treating as if we're either dumb or that people didn't watch WandaVision, which, what are you doing here? You gotta do your homework. Don't jump in and start complaining, oh, I don't know what's going on. Blah, 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 blah. Go watch WandaVision. You're Ralph Boner? <laughs> Actually, no, don't watch One Division. Just watch someone's review of it. I don't know. I don't know. Just watch clips. The ending would just disappoint you. Anyways, it is revealed that Billy's the one that broke the spell for Agatha, and she gets herself into a tussle with Aubrey Plaza's character, which we do not know her name yet. And I guess it's going to be one, one of those mystery boxes like Billy's name, which I did spoil. Who cares? You know, again, if you got a brain, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out with all the hints. But I do find it interesting what is preventing Agatha from learning this information. It's like as if maybe the spirit of Scarlet Witch is preventing her from doing it, but I don't know. Because we know that Wanda's not dead dead. She'll come back eventually. The character's grown so much more popular since WandaVision and Doctor Strange 2. So who knows, maybe we will see Scarlet Witch at the end of the season. But yeah, Aubrey Plaza's character was about to kill Agatha and she says that, Why kill me in a pathetic state where you can have me at my bestest? So she literally pulled a cell against Vegeta where Vegeta was going to kill Cell, convince him to absorb Android 18 to get stronger. This is basically a similar scenario which cue in the trunk saying no. no! And also Agatha is butt ass naked which that was Catherine Hahn's idea because she believed the character would behave like that just not think about putting clothes on and try to get answers straight away. That was the reason why that was put in there. But it turns out to be quite a bit of controversy, which we had heaps of guys being shirtless and stuff like that for eye candy. And <laughs> I guess Agatha being naked is one of them, but I guess more intentionally for comedic purposes. Trust me, if it was Aubrey Plaza naked, I'm pretty sure no one would complain, but it, it was just weird. It was definitely a weird scene to me. And then episode two is just basically getting a coven of witches and going into the door before before the special type of witches show up to kill Agatha, which they escape in the nick of time. You know, just a very classic trope, but you know, it works. Oh yeah, and this cringy song was being played while they were summoning this door for them to head to the witches road. Man, witches and their chants. But yeah, that was basically it. A lot of it was just filler, waste of time, especially the first episode. You could have done the reveal within 10 minutes, man. 
you didn't have to waste our precious time. But you know, I gotta put content out, so that's why I am watching this. And I kind of figured it wouldn't be as bad as the Acolyte. So far, it's just boring. It's not insultingly bad. It's not based on any famous comic book. They're doing their own shit. I mean, the MCU so far recently, they've just been making their own shit up as they go, which is not intentionally a bad thing at times, but it just needs to be written well, and it just needs to be good with likable characters. But hey, Catherine Hahn is as charismatic as ever. I would say she was sort of overacting a bit too much during the detective dream sequence. It was a bit too much for my liking, but at least one joke landed for me. When I didn't laugh, I just had to chuckle. Does this look centered? Let me see, maybe if I uh, just put it a little more to the up. The whole throwing the pen outside thing, that was, yeah. A chuckle, really. And Aubrey Plaza, I really like her. She's really good. And that witch outfit, you know, dang. She rocking those heels, I'll tell you that much. And obviously, there's a history between her and Agatha. They, I guess they were a thing, because I think it was a leak that Agatha also likes women. Surprise, surprise, to absolutely no one who predicts these reveals that a character's bi or some bullcrap like that. Whatever. You know, she likes women, whatever. But I feel like we will get a flashback between these two characters' history. And I will say, bringing in the neighbor from WandaVision was also pretty funny just to say we got an earth witch covered and also the sets so far look pretty good i'm just glad they're not using the volume but yeah the stupid marvel humor is still there it's just trying to be funny but it's not funny at times most of the time to be honest it's just funny this is the follow-up after deadpool and wolverine <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you this show would not get as much views as Marvel would hope. This kind of show is made for my mother, for God's sakes. She loves the witchcraft and all that stuff. But again, that's not your target audience. Hate to say it. And the Acolyte is also proof of that. Is it a 1 out of 10 show? No, not really so far. It's just boring. And apparently there's a lot more musical numbers stuff, which, don't get me wrong, I like musicals, but if it's that same chant they're gonna sing, uh, I think I'm just gonna bloody stab my ears with a fork and what's this whole talk about a gay explosion apparently Aubrey Plaza said that and I'm going what like a little rainbow explosion <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm very curious about that. Mainly this whole reason to laugh at it, to be honest. And for the love of God, stop sending that weirdo to interview your actors and actresses. He says the dumbest questions ever. Stop it. <laughs> but Agatha is the gayest Marvel project yet. It's been described as the gayest Marvel project ever. That Agatha is the gayest project Marvel has ever done. You need to shut the fuck up! But hey, those are the opinions from a Gumby.